Maybe, so, yeah. uh, maybe kind of. Okay, let's go. So now it depicts in bands here. Tignitas versus Cloud9. LeBlanc and Annie band out. Can't really see how Kiwi Kid got that yesterday. Caused quite a bit of trouble, and it won't be a problem for Cloud9 today. Yep. Taking out the double Kiwi Kid special here. Yeah. Both Annie and Alistar. Kiwi Kid unfazed, though. He, he said <laughs> so many times that he wants to branch out. He wants to play more, uh, have a more diverse set of champions there you that go. people fear him for. Oh, you are forced to. But I'm not going to focus him, though. Now, this does leave up Sivir. Sivir is always a champion that I look at for Dignitas just because Core JJ performs so well on the champion. Also, it allows Dignitas to pick fights when they need. It gives them the go button, mm -hmm. and they're actually able to make decisive moves with it. So, always an, an AD carry that I like to see for Dignitas. But, probably not going to want to first pick that yeah. and grab something. Oh! As I said, the other stats, Kalista always first banned or always banned or first picked. That's right. We actually saw a Ash versus Kalista going on between these guys yesterday. Core JJ flashing into the air was on accident. I swear to God. It may happen. just happen. Why not? We were talking about it yesterday. I was with Jat that Sneaky and Lemon used to be the kind of ones to pick Ash with something else and just pay play that lane. Now it's differently, Sneaky can go even harder instead of be a utility role. Back to the picks at hand. Thresh and Rek'Sai picked up over on the side of Cloud9, seeing that Kalista in the hands of Gamsu for Core JJ on the side of Team Dignitas as they hover their next two with 30 seconds left. Now, the Azini Zack. He does like the Zack. He loves it. The Jarvis there as well. <laughs> I'm, I'm really I'm really not sold on Zack. It's probably personal bias just because I feel like a like I have no brain when I'm playing Zack and you just bouncing around in circles, <laughs> losing blobs, but he does have strengths. The main strengths of Zack that do need to be noted, he's extremely good if you can control vision. If you have control of vision in the game, yeah. Zack makes it a very terrifying lane experience, especially for mid lane. So if they want to focus Incarnation, Zack is actually a strong yeah. tool to pick up for them, and Azine can make that happen fairly early on. You can slingshot into the middle of that mid lane, and if he's not paying attention, doesn't see the shadow under his feet, doesn't flash out of it, um, then that can be a very, very potent uh, gank towards the mid lane especially. So we'll see if Zingy can make that happen and combo with Shifter. Maybe Shifter does go you know, to one of more of the mm -hmm. assassin mid lane route that we have seen him uh, trend back to time and time again. Or if he just goes with the standard uh, farm style. Kogma is definitely low mobility champion and a good target for Zack. So yeah. maybe they will keep up their sweepers in the mid lane and try and target him. Seems like it could be the leave up for Incarnation or the take from him on that Kogma. Usually yeah. it's one in the pick. mid lane here. Dignitas taking their time in the beginning of their picks. What will Shifter have in the mid lane? Tried for some Azir. All right, I'll go with the his fairly standard long range farming. Uh, Ziggs is extremely good right now. Do it! Especially with Luden's Echo. Do it. <laughs> you remember that game too, uh, when Shifter was still on coast where he one versus five got a four got a quadra kill as Ziggs with a Sheen, just so he could get in there for extra empowered auto yeah. attacks as well. Uh, last year. Ooh, will it be the Jarvan top? Not this year though. Definitely a favorite of Gamsu, and it was even banned against him yesterday. Yeah, it absolutely was. Is it Gamsu or Gamsu? Ban. CLG banded against them. Pole Belter picked that Jarvan, or I'm sorry, picked that Kogma in the mid lane to probably prevent that Jarvan from coming in. Doesn't have to deal with it this time. I'm sure whoever gets the Kogma is very happy to see that wasn't a Jarvan coming in. And a Nar actually gets picked up with a Vladimir. Two games in a row now. He'll get some play time, and that will be going to Shifter in the mid lane. So what does Cloud9 round out with now? Definitely a fight composition coming in from Dignitas. How will they handle their Kogma? Yeah, it looks like, so with this pick for Shifter, they're not looking for, you know, real early pressure to keep Kogma down. Right. Uh, if it does go to the mid lane, which is a bit curious, but they feel like they've got enough pressure with the Zac, the really long range engage of Zac, that they have confidence in a Zingy. He'll be able to bomb the back line um, and get back there to Kogma. Now, this very well could be a Kogma for Sneaky, and they could flex this and right. you know, make it an AD carry and pick something else. But there it is. All right, what, uh, what were you going to do? You were going to go on. This is going to be a long one, Riv, so I'll wait till we get in game. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So the Ash does get picked up. Sneaky's able to get that. It was banned against him yesterday when they played versus Team Solo Mid, so he will not the, be able to get that. Yeah, the thing is, I, ha I haven't even... See, people are not even using Ash's kit right now to her full potential. It's just after the rework, and people aren't even using all of her strengths right now, and she's still really good. I'm very curious to see, because Cloud9 is the team that I'm looking towards to fully utilize her kit. Um, we'll go over it step by step later, um, but this is going to be a very, it's a very solid pick band phase for Cloud9, I feel. But well, we haven't uh, seen Sneaky play team it. Team versus Dig. Maybe he's the pilot. No, we have we've not been waiting seen for. Him play it in a very long time. Very long time. Like I said, it used to be back him and Lemon Nation would control the lane with vision. Now it's definitely a different work. You can still control that vision with Hawkshot. You can do a little bit more with Ash as well in that lane and be a bit more aggressive. More. Charlie to shake hands and walk to the back. The teams are ready, locked and loaded in, and you know what that means. It is time to vote for who is going to win this match. Make sure you're heading over to Twitter, tweet at LOL Esports, and use either the hashtag DIGWIN or hashtag C9WIN for who you think is going to take the W throughout this game. Again, we actually see Incarnation going for a second time on Kog'Maw, keeping it comfortable, trying to keep on what he knows here for this stage of the LCS. We're going to be on the Rift, Dignitas versus Cloud9 for our second game of the day. All right, so the reason that I'm so upset with Ash is that she affects the jungle a lot. And Meteos is on Rek'Sai with a global teleport and really early pressure coming from the jungle. So this is a really a strong enabling right. pick for Meteos. Let's see where Dignitas heads out to start their game. And we'll see how Cloud9 starts their game. We're watching Medios right now, and according to his teammates, Medios' shot calling is good and will only get better. Yesterday, I felt pretty comfortable about Medios' shot calling. Um, I, I trust, I trust him. So, and I think he's doing a really good job on it so far. So I'm looking forward to see um, if the progress on it. All right. So. As Cloud9 going for the deep wards, looking for uh, the lane swap with the Ash Thresh to get away from extremely high kill pressure, Callista Nautilus. Let's talk about Ash. We'll start out with the very basic stuff, right? because she still has her old play patterns. Ah, yes, Ash still has her long range volley plus empowered auto attack combo. That's very good for poke. Mm -hmm. um, plus, because of her new passive, uh, you always want to vo volley first before they're in attack range, so you can coat them with that frost and you get your guaranteed, you know, empowered auto attack. The passive does not work the other way. Your volley doesn't get extra damage for frost targets. That's still the same. The only thing is now she also has the added backup of the five stat, five focus staff Q activation, which just basically makes her stronger in all areas. Stronger attack, stronger attack speed, and increases the slow. Looks like they may be seen if they do try and stick around this blue buff for too long. Mm -hmm. uh, calling the lane swap here, so Dingtas looking to grab the kill pressure of the Callista Nihilus into the Ash Thresh lane. Lemonation gonna oh dear. find himself outnumbered <laughs> and feel like leaving the scene. Now, of course, the other, we're talking about the basic Ash pattern still. Nothing new here. She still has her Crystal Arrow. Of course, that's great for setting up ganks, um, as well as mid-game objective control, and, yeah. of course, long-range engage for picking people off in the late game which is one of the number one ways to win late game. That's it. That's everything, right? That's all changes. I think it's everything. No, Ash, Ash it's pretty good. No, the most important <laughs> big giant chains for Ash. Okay, yes, they took off the gold from her hawk shot. I don't care. They made her hawk shot global. Yes, I've seen every single AD carry squander this ability so far. If you give this ability to a smart jungler, it is insane. Again, Information is the most valuable quantity for junglers. 130 seconds between cooldowns on these hawk shots. Up, oh, looks like we may see a gank here first. Zingy looking to actually affect the Ash lane with his early slingshot from Zach. Yeah. Up. Oh, Woo. Gets There's a flash. a flash. But as you're saying, with the knowledge of the jungler, even within that 130 seconds, you can kind of bait out that time and still it's, know what you need to get. It's ridiculously easy yeah. to track the enemy jungler if you have Ash on your team. With Hawkshot being made global and being able to stack up two <laughs> charges, you can actually see the entire enemy jungler if you've stacked up two charges yep. of the Hawkshot. If you're on blue side... Uh, 
Ziki gets Almost. Back. This is that kill pressure we talked about from the lane. Oh, Zingy's gonna make it over the wall. He hits. He's gonna go for the kill. What a kill. What a gank. A Zingy comes in for the rinse and repeat. They find the lane swap match with the kill lane. They bring in a Zingy with his classic Zack pick, finds the slingshot, and they capitalize on it. Return gank to the duo lane, and they punish the Ash pick. However, <laughs> However, let's get back to that hawk shot. Because if you give that information to a jungler like Meteos, uh, it's, well, it's basically like Battleship, except it's a Battleship game that's been played halfway through. It's yeah. much easier. League of Legends is much easier than Battleship even for jugglers. Because you can check pretty much the entire jungle, and then you can know where the other jungler is for the next 30 seconds. Meteos also being on Rek'Sai has the global teleport. Oh. It makes oh. your ward placement for your entire team really efficient. Yep. Because once you track him on one side of the jungle, you can save 20 seconds on your uh, trinket ward. Uh, you don't have to drop it as early because you know he's not down there. Uh, yeah. And it just makes, it snowballs your vision game, basically is what it does. So You love having Ash on your team is what I'm getting out of this. I love it. And <laughs> he actually messed up that hawk. That was a terrible hawk shot. Come on, Sneaky. It's global. You shoot it all the way down. You can check all three camps on that, the red side. I, I have to agree he with would, you on that. There's no reason to not fire to cross map. Uh, he would have seen Zach. So I guess even Cloud9 not fully utilizing it yet. Yeah. Basically, even if you get into solo queue on my team with Ash, your E is not your E anymore. Your E is my E. <laughs> when I tell you to fire it, you fire it into the enemy jungler. All right. I guarantee our team will have 50% at least less casualties. We'll keep an eye on those E's. We'll make sure Sneak is making and using them right. And you can even have uh, an interview with him after the game and talk oh, about it. It's so strong. So we're one in already on this one. That was a Zingy's gang towards the top lane. Unfortunately, Sneaky did not have Hawkshot yet for that kill. That's why it happened. But 92% over to them still with First Blood to dig. The fans standing behind C9 still here. We'll see what... Zingy can still do. Going again for the top lane. Knowing that Flash is down, I actually think he just walked out of range of Meteos yeah. there, so he should be good. And the pink ward coverage from the top lane. Love the investment. Make sure this helps, right. You've got control of this top side. You want to continue to punish Ash. Low mobility. Her weakness. Barely. She retained the one weakness. She does not have a dash in her team still. <laughs> so she does have a mega slow she can activate if she can... Uh, pop her Q. However, no dash versus Callista Nautilus. Very scary. Invest in a pink ward. You've got the support of the long range engage from Zach. Uh, I like it. Ding Toss is going to be able to punish this lane and zoning already. Kobe rant done. I won't talk about it. The hot shot for any longer. Here comes oh, so nice again. They could get him. It's so close to the lantern. But a Zingy puts himself goal side to that. Beautifully done. And again, Sneaky goes down in the top lane. Already going for two Dorans in that one to kind of keep himself in it and alive, but to no avail. All right. Still getting pushed in in the mid lane here. We've been seeing this from Incarnation. Shifter's doing a good job, though, as Vladimir getting pushed in, keeping his CS up. So yeah. Incarnation can't get it in quick enough. He's got all the way to his spell vamp, so Vladimir feels fine. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Kog'Maw's happy with the farm lane, so he's just stacking up his tier, obviously. Incarnation feeling much better this time around. Shifter knew it, picking the Vladimir into this matchup. Yeah. Um, that they were going to give Kogma a fairly easy early route here. And with a Zingy opting to target topside instead. Just going to be a uh, scary Kogma to worry about later. Basically, though, you can work around this until Kogma gets Ludin's Echo. Mm -hmm. You don't really care about him <laughs> if you're Dig Toss. He's not going to put a lot of pressure on you, um, especially since he's not level 11 yet. Once he gets level 11 with the Ludens, though, it's going to be a very big problem. Also, I feel like one of the reasons Meteos is going with this hard farm jungle this time around, even though he's on Rek'Sai, is because yesterday he went with some really early gank attempts, both of which were unsuccessful. And Meteos hates to have unsuccessful ganks. He may have come into this game already pre-planning to go fairly heavy on the farm route. Um, and it has, it does seem like it's affected his mentality. Zingy though with a really good early start, already level 6. Oh boy. Fish in the barrel. Thank you for my half health dragon. Uh oh, teleport comes down. Zingy making some good decisions. Nar is already there with the TP. Will be coming in from balls here. Able to take down Shifter. It looks like they're still able to get their dragon to Cloud9. No, 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 no. no. Gamsu with the boomerang from the outside. Even got me until I looked down at the icon. What a sneaky play. 
Three to one, and Dignitas is not giving Cloud9 an inch back into this game. So you, you see the thought there from Cloud9. It was, we're going to swap our teleport up top, utilize that to gain, uh, gain some dragon pressure. They didn't actually want to have to use the teleport, but because the Zingy's level six already and uh, fearlessly jumps into the dragon pit, they're going to have to channel their teleport, lose a kill. Of course, they're going to be able to clean up because they, as we said, swap their top lane, teleport up top, and they have their duo down bottom. Uh, yeah. But they almost lost the double kill. And here's the boomerang. Oof. Meteos was so low, by the way. There was That's not an out smite. That's not a miss smite by Meteos. Right. Everybody calm down. Don't go ragging on him for missing it. He was <laughs> at like 50 HP running away from Shifter, and Sneaky had to save him with his heal. Yeah, I think he'd already chilling smited somebody anyways. Oh, probably. Um, but yeah, good steal there from Gamsu. Able to grab that one. And Cloud9 stumbling very early on due to the Azingi factor. First game where Azingi has had a really, really big impact early on. We talked about how they're mm -hmm. choosing between so many solo queue junglers for so long. Yeah. And Dignitas, their choice to stick with the Zingy, questioned by many, many people. This game paying off. Absolutely. There's a Callista that. First gank to rinse and repeat he had went well. Core JJ just getting out alive as they get a nice kill into balls in the bottom lane. But the Zingy's ganks definitely followed more by the team as well. Seems like there's a lot more communication in the first place. When we saw Kiwi Kid and him just get the ganks we saw previously, Kiwi Kid was already setting up to the side of the minions. Everything was already in position. They weren't a step behind at all. And that's why things have been working out. Hopefully they can keep it that way. We've seen a lot of gains for Cloud9 come to fruition for them right in the middle. They take it back and they take it back with no remorse. Really, really strong start for Dignitas. Yes, it is. I'm very excited to see what they can do with it in the mid game because they have had, you know, especially last split, several games where they get off to strong early starts. You know, they played early game very well. That's all right. They're just showing me that it went the full distance. And he found somebody. <laughs> but you can tell that this is not a jungler controlled hawk shot. <laughs> that is a. Uh, Sneaky looking out for his own interest, trying to find when the support is coming back to lane. Mm -hmm. They did get the timer on the support, um, and when Dignitas duo lane is returning, so that's about um, a B, maybe B plus hawk shot. B plus, you. okay. Um, at this the point, fountain, it could have been A. And the thing is, it's, a, it's such a snowballing mechanic. You're supposed to try and get it as soon as your AD carry gets the hawk shot and then take over control of the game because once you get a bead on the enemy jungler, it's much easier Ooh. to keep up tracking them than it is to try and find them now after you're already behind. You haven't been able to get any deep wards. You haven't really right. been able to snowball your vision game. So A lot of times when we saw Double If using it yesterday, he would always have... Uh, whoever, I think it was a Sejuani they were playing against uh, for a Zingy. Oh, it would always be found out. Always find him in the jungle every time they shot it. Really useful for making sure that he couldn't get any ganks off. So. Well, let's see if uh, Dingtos can yeah. transition their early game power into some mid game calls here. Swap the dual lane up top, pressure the turret. They're outnumbered at the moment, but they do have a Zingy in the wings. Nope, they're going mid. It looks like it. I feel like Core JJ is safe by himself up here with uh, hardly any wars and just bodies between him. This could get dangerous. You are not going to face check. He gets a little too close for his own good. He has members coming from both sides, but his team as well. Coming from the right flank, throws Kiwi Kid in here. Here's oh. Zingy as well. They baited this one in practically and said, Core JJ, if you feel like getting crazy, go ahead, buddy. You're going to pick up a kill, and so will Kiwi Kid. Yep, and there you go. You see why inf information wow. is the most valuable commodity because you can't afford to take fights like that. This is the strong point of Dig. They've got this really, really buff Kalista. 202 at the moment, or 203 now with the Bloodthirster as well. That is the point of power. You can't afford to fight here unless you have numbers advantage. A Zingy dropping bomb. Should be okay. Misses that one. Close for him. It's okay to miss a few. You don't sink every battleship every time. Six to one, 13 minutes in. And Dignitas with a very nice lead. Now, how do they hold it and what do they do next? Well, they're doing exactly what they need to. They've set up all the vision inside the jungle. 
Talked about the most important thing with Zach, controlling that vision so you can get off these really long slingshots. Those things are, at this point in the game, are gonna burn a flash or they're going to find uh, a kill target. Okay, we'll see this again. Yeah, here we go. Fate's from. Call. This is the flexibility so of the Callista ultimate that we talked about. Such a long range engage there. Combos with a zingy. Boom, there's another kill for 4JJ. Such a great champion to throw into as Nautilus. Just get the rip tied down, everyone slowed. You make sure you hit the right targets with the crowd control thereafter. 203 for the bottom lane. Of course, JJ and Kiwi Kid here from Team Dignitas, and 203 from a Zingy. Yeah. Seems like some teamwork to me. Great early start here from Dig again. Uh, just need to continue to control the vision and increase their lead. Now, mm -hmm. for Team Cloud9. They're, they really need to go into defensive mode right now and yeah. wait until they get the looted Zeko completed from Kogma. Uh, he's already coming up on level 11, so he's almost Pretty there. Close. Vetus is going for a bit of a risky move uh, because they saw everybody going for Dragon. Uh, he doesn't have Smite either. Got it anyway. Got it without Smite. So Medios still able to get the steal. Oh. They feel like if it's getting stolen, he doesn't have enough protection in the mid lane, and it's going to be right. A Cappy and surprise will come up. It was the death charge either way. Yep. And he goes down. Dragon also gets picked up by a Zingy. Incarnation is going to take a quick break. <laughs> That's the worst feeling when you... It's certain death already. You're staring at the charge, <laughs> inching towards you. <laughs> the Jaws theme music starts playing. And his life flashes before his eyes. Both that summoners be great. down for the Cogmoth. Now I want a big shark to come out of that, but that's too his like. <laughs> All right. Clarity. We Maybe, need to have clarity. Yeah. Still. Maybe a new skin. They can work it in. We'll see how this went again. So really, just knowing that Meteos went deep, Incarnation didn't have enough protection. What a shot there. Locks him up long Woo enough. Yeah. Late game Ash Arrows, my friend. If Cloud9 can turtle, uh, just everybody rally around Incarnation. Ooh, wasn't quite able to complete the Luvin's Echo on that back. No. But next back he will be able to. So. Everybody crowd around him, play defensively, try and hold on until you see an opportunity to use the Ash Arrow. Remember the basic strengths that carry over through the rework. Still, uh, the amazing long-range engage potential for the Ash Arrows if somebody's out of position. Incarnation, though, he's got no summoners. He's toast. Ridiculous. Oh, my. He doesn't even stand a chance to get to the Lantern that time. Comes up, and he goes back down. Dignitas is really starting to work off of the mid lane from Cloud9 right now, and it looks like they have an opening to start moving in the jungle. Kobe, once they start denying the blues, this is going to get so much harder. Yep, they can, they've they already damage. shown that they can start uh, the, with the dive chain. The two low mobility targets, Ash and Kogma, because Dignitas got such a good early lead, mm -hmm. all they have to do is continue to bully these two low mobility champions. They've set up complete vision inside the jungle. Azingi can come out of nowhere. There's almost no safe spot for Cloud9 now. Azingi can drop over from pretty much any wall. See if the poke can still help them get back into this game. Against Team Solo Mid, we didn't have a high kill score game. And this isn't extreme, but Dignitas has capitalized on a lot more than in that C9 TSM game. Yeah, and I like how Azingi is maxing his slingshot. First, some people, you know, like Meteos, in some occasions do like to max the W for harder farming. But to mm -hmm. really snowball, since they got such a good early lead, max slingshot 100% uh, first so that you can get those really long bombs. So it looks like Core JJ finally getting some attack speed in there. I like the Bloodthirster first build. He was able to go a little aggressive in that early part of the game we saw. Definitely helping the team to get themselves some advantages in the top lane. Shutting down Sneaky and Lemon Nation. Azingi still doing well for the game. Got himself a few more kills at 3-0-3. Been down CS, but that's only because Meteos is trying to stay in the jungle. He can't really get to his lanes fast enough. 18 minutes coming up on the clock. Third Dragon should be in a little bit, as we saw Gamsu able to steal that last one away from the clutches of Cloud9. And I'm sure they're kind of wondering right now, you know, what calls do we make? It's, it's, <laughs> this is all on Medios. High had sometimes been in these situations, right. and you resort back to, oh, we just go back to what we did in that situation. Medios has to pull now from nowhere. Obviously, yeah, the hardest situation to be in is when you're behind. The true test of a shot caller, mm -hmm. trying to manufacture 
a victory when behind. They are really far behind right now, so there's a lot more pressure. You know, there's a lot more things to look at for Cloud9 because there are so many more wrong moves to make right. than right moves. Really, they have to be patient. Uh, they do have, again, the long range Ash Arrow to try and capitalize on a mistake. So basically, Cloud9 are hoping for a positional error from Dignitas. Looks like they are going to go for a Gamsu. zero rage bar Gamsu. Yeah, Narbar just went down. Good call there, Kobe. And it looks like he may actually have the rest of the cavalry here. New challenger's approach to this fight. Ball still tanky. A good bounce out from Azingi to kind of dis disrupt the fight long enough for Shifter to get there. Very nicely played by the rest of the team. They were just kind of buying time as well as getting as much damage done. Get out of that one alive. A great escape for Cloud9. However, a risky move to go for in the first place. Uh, because they don't have any vision yeah. past their own jungle, um, you can tell they're really looking for some way to claw their way back into this game. And your affinity for risk goes way up when you're behind because you know you have to make some sort of play to get back in the game. That one, not working out though. Barely able to escape. Oh, he jumped. <laughs> Got him right in mid-jump. Unfortunately, no follow-up there, but still able to harass a bit and at least sweep that out as soon as it's put down. So no trinket coming in for Gamsu in the top lane. Sneaky's been here farming uh -oh. in the bottom. He feels a little bit of the love, though. Whoa. <laughs> hey. Oh, they're going to fully cut him off. He was going for a slice the pie technique, but it doesn't look like... Kiwi kid looking for the it. clothesline. <laughs> It did not work. No, that doesn't work that way. <laughs> Tri trial, trial and error, though. Now he knows. All right, so Core JJ now able to deny a little bit of resource here. Not too much. They don't get the kill, but they're going to try to get away with something. 30 seconds on Dragon. They make sure they have vision coverage of that. And I'm sure it could just be Core JJ if they wanted to run this one down yeah. and control the map. Definitely like the uh, neutral objective control from yeah. Dignitas. Uh, this is one area where they have had troubles in the past. Going uh, for early Barons before they really need to. Mm -hmm. They have such easy control of Dragon uh, because they're so far ahead right now. And since they got one fairly early, they can just stack these up. That'll be number three. Uh, so so the <laughs> we can stop showing the full length uh, Hawkshots, by the way. Um, really, it's something that depends on the early game. And obviously, Hawkshot is much, much stronger in competitive play than it is in solo queue because of the fact that you coordinate it with yeah. your uh, ward drops as well as all the information um, communicated from your teammates. And it all comes together. Here we go. Cloud9, though. Top lane shove. They want to try and get something for that dragon on the other side of the map. Chased off by a couple members of Dig, though. And Cloud9, once again, come away empty-handed mm -hmm. in the trade. I think there's a common let's play safe still coming from Dignitas here in their comms. Everything they're doing never turns into being tunneled, never turns into overextending, and they're just protecting everything. Gamsu stayed safe in the top lane, 174 to 165 there, while the rest of the team has done great around the map. He's not trying to force anything there. Dignitas working real well here on day two. Looks like they could come up with a win if they can keep this consistent. You know, Cloud9 still has a few fights to go through with a 5v5. We'll see if that can pull them back into the game. Waiting for that arrow. Waiting for maybe a flank from Meteos. It's going to be tough, though. This far behind. Yep. So they're trying to scrape together more money for Cogbine Ash. Mm -hmm. Funneling as much CS as they can into those two carries. Balls himself has been trying to stack up on Maokai. He's got the Righteous Glory, at least. So there is follow-up for the Ash arrow. Um, the possibility of a teleport play is greatly diminished when you lose so much map control early on because obviously your ward line is going to be much, much closer right. to home. So it's really hard to pull those plays off. That's why he hasn't gone for home guard upgrade, just going raw tank stats. Um, and it's really going to be a fairly defensive... Oh! Forces the flash. Box goes down. A lot of things being used in defense here. Meteos goes for the first offensive play of this fight, and it looks like they actually make it. Got Kiwi one. Kid, that's going to be a bounce house right inside the fight. Here comes Core JJ from the outside. Hurricane's finished on him as well. He's going to start spitting out some damage, and it looks like Gamsu still going hard. Gets a wallop onto Lemonation and drops him down. If 
core. JJ can get back into range. He may be able to get a few more. Meteos curves himself outside and gets around that death. So elimination and balls go down. I don't know if they have enough to take down this Baron. Yeah. Man, even with a really oh boy. strong four-on-one start to the fight, Cloud9. Oh just boy. don't have the firepower to pull it off. Sneaky's going for the hero steal. They saw him coming around. All right, Medios does have smite ready. He's going in. No, he's not. Oh, you All got right. me. <laughs> wow, so Dignitas able to pull that one off and get themselves out alive. Very nicely done to kind of keep these fights going. Zingy yeah. knowing his potential, and then Kiwi Kid knowing how far he can go. Like I said, they're not tunneling. They're taking the fights that they know. Yeah. So you can see how far away Kalista is right now. So this is kind of a good start for Cloud9. Mm. They get DPS down onto the tanks. But man, that knockup from Zingy into the knockup from Kalista. Once Holy everybody shit. from Dingtox arrives, they pretty much melt Cloud9. Sneaky even had good position up over on the Krugs on the other side of the wall. But Dingtox is too far ahead at this point. And when you can uh, combo those double knockups, uh, yeah. spot plenty of time for Gamsu to teleport in, even without Narbar prepped. He was able to charge it up during the fight to chase off Cloud9. Real quick leg. A lot of Nars have been playing that a lot better and not giving a team the chance to play around the bar. They're just able to make it happen immediately. One of the reasons we kind of saw Nar fall away is teams would just walk away from the situation. But when the situation continues itself due to all of that engaged, Dignitas has come up with win after win. Now 25 minutes in, a third dragon to them that they had already picked up before that engage we just saw. Another one in two minutes, possibly theirs, at 10 to three now. Pretty good gold lead of 8,000 is what they're working with. Looks like could head towards the top lane and start to split this a little bit and really start to spread Cloud9 thin. It's getting tough for them to even be able to come back in this. Very, very tough. This would definitely be up there. Mm -hmm. As far as, uh, as a gold is at, comebacks. There's 1,100 right now into Incarnation, so not too many spike items are going to be in his inventory anytime soon, especially since they're not the one taking down the turrets. Cloud9 has yet to drop a turret of Dignitas right now as they pressure up the map. And look now for inhibitor turrets, the last second tier in the mid lane, or in the bottom lane, I should say. Yep. If Cloud9 can come back, man, this is a really good test of just how strong Late game mm -hmm. Pogba and Ash are. Yeah. Uh, because if they pull off this comeback, then. Oh, there's a hook. But oh, they've Fates also call. got Fates Call. All right. So quickly saved and such an easy decision to not take that fight for Dignitas as they move out. Playing with a very sturdy head on their shoulders this game. A Zingy, by the way, 80% kill contribution from the jungle, Zach. Really making the game. He, he got the early lead for them. Didn't allow them to utilize Ash early on. He ganked Ash before she even had Hawkshot. A lot of early pressure from Azingi. Good early um, jungle path from him to get up there and capitalize on their uh, kill duo lane, mm -hmm. which, by the way, they've had trouble finding the right lane swap, Stingtoss. Uh, they did a really good job of actually calling the lane swap, getting Kalista Nautilus into that lane and punishing Ash's lack of a dash. More than once as well. Got good help in that duo from Core JJ and Kiwi Kid on his Grom. Had a little bit faster of a jungle and made sure he gave that help back. He said, you guys help me, I'll scratch your back. That's the other thing. A Zingy starting on the Grom and knowing that Lemonation saw him at the Grom, mm -hmm. Lemonation would assume that a Zingy would end his jungle path on the other side of the map. That's not true. Come straight yeah. back to gank their lane. But he did. <laughs> but he did. So they're going to get another dragon as well. So this one does go uncontested. And that puts the pressure on for Aspect of the Dragon. Number five in six minutes here if Dignitas want to pressure it. C9 will have to respond. All objectives have been Dignitas' this game. And not a turret yet going over to Cloud9. It seems to be something that's happening now to teams. Just can't get these turrets. Dignitas felt it yesterday. They want someone else to feel what it's like to not get a turret. <laughs> like they are well on their way to Absolutely. that goal. And up top to try and break the final uh, few hits on the inhibitor turret. One more. Oh, it's going to oh, be the attack. 
back. Take that turret down first. Great eyes from Core JJ to pull the support out and keep it on that turret. But I don't oh, think he had enough oh. eyes to find the rest of the team. The Bloodthirst are in there, able to help him and build him right back up as the front line is keeping everyone else off of him. Core JJ only had to deal with balls, and now he is on the inhibitor with the rest of his team, and now they're going to be going for even more. Whew. What a heartbreaking uh, interaction there. Balls with Core JJ. I thought they got themselves into trouble trying to do too much there. A little too close, trying some chances, but they yeah. chanced it correctly. Gapsu on the front line, though. Zingy yeah. on the front line. They didn't allow Incarnation to get off one of his ultimates to finish Core JJ. Kept him tied up, pressuring Sneaky. Good job there by Ding Tosh to follow through with the mid-game pressure. A very, very strong Catch him when they don't expect it. Oh, they'll go for the turret. Instantly, in. Incarnation is hit. Yep, there's the Fates call back in. Re-engage. Knock up so there. So low. What's he get? Down. Sneaky gets annihilated. He's got about 20, 30 HP there. Ooh. Holy moly. Well, maybe Incarnation could have gotten another one off because Sneaky was actually the one who got hit with the Gnar. Mm -hmm. They pretty much focused Sneaky with the Vlad as well as Gnar in that fight and took him down very quickly. All right. From now on, it should be a lot easier for Dignitas to uh, finish this off. They've got the single inhibitor down, yep. inhibitor down. They should be able to grab uh, Baron as well when that pops up. They've got plenty of map control. And then, as Marcel said, very impressive game yeah. from Dignitas. For JJ, showing why Kalista first ban or banned or first picked every single game. Yeah. And his hands also deadly. Definitely liking this composition from them more with the Nautilus than with the Annie. And it seems to be working out for them better as well, too. Instead of having Kiwi Kid really rely on all those flashes to get in, he can kind of just Nautilus his way in like he likes to. He doesn't have a prerequisite for it this time other than having Q up, really. And it's been working out for him very well. 13 to 4 right now against Cloud9. They cannot seem to right the wrongs here within this game. And honestly, Dignitas isn't giving them enough time. They've been doing different things each time. That last one to trick C9 under their own turret, take it out during the fight. Just playing small edges that they have. It's been working out very well. Already over a 10,000 gold lead. They go for second Baron in the game. And the next dragon is going to be their aspect as well. So Cloud9 has to put their foot down at some point here. All right. I don't know. I don't know what you commit to this. I guess just one person try and go for a steal. Medios just kind of hanging out while well, he took the lantern. So it's going to be a fight on the outside of the pit. Incarnation in a bad spot at the right time for Dignitas. The Akathian surprise could take down a Zingy. He hops away though, and he's able to stay alive. <laughs> Gamsu now on the front line. Sneaky can't turn around, but only to Arrow rather. And it is going to still be the follow-up shifter with the ghost on. Looking to just dance the pool around. <laughs> He's like, can I go through the wall? I can't slide under it. I'm gonna have to go around. Go mini Zach. <laughs> He's in keychain form. He is, actually. All right, so that's gonna for that, the team. That's probably gonna be the game here for Ding Toss. With Baron Buff, running straight up towards the uh, bottom lane. Already has minion wave. There you go. Nope, oh, they're gonna head mid instead. Wow, a dismantling of the Cloud9 composition this time. Definitely working off pretty much a tempered incarnation in the mid lane who can't get off anything in these fights with the team. Dignitas doing a very nice job of keeping priorities in order. The objectives are all theirs. They still have yet to lose a turret, and now they are knocking on the last door of the inhibitor turret to the base of C9. It's going to be the inhibitor as well. What a game so far. Is Dig coming up on 60,000 gold here, 32 minutes in. They're going to exit the base with all inhibitors down for Cloud9. Whew, they're going to let him stew in it for a while. Yeah. We have soundly beaten you. Deal with it. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> the glasses go on. That is, you know, always a... And that. Uh, Retracted. <laughs> yeah, they're going to take the blue buff on the way out, too, just to make sure Incarnation no. does not get blue buff. They don't want Kogma to pull off any sort of shenanigans. Late game Kogma does have a tendency to pull out miraculous plays. It's kind of been the way that teams can quickly get at this Incarnation Kogma pick. If you're not going to take him out in lane, make sure he doesn't get blues. It's kind of even something that looks like C9 wanted to focus to him with Meteos not requiring those himself on Rek'Sai. So 
not having those to start any of these fights mean Dignitas is always full health when they enter in. Maybe an Ash arrow stops them for a second, but Zingy can still close the gap. I still think Ash is ridiculously strong. So um, well, we but Dignitas did the perfect job right. of preying on her weakness and making Cloud9 pay for it. I'm, uh, yesterday, seeing Doublelift play it, every time the arrow was up, it was shot closely from the Fog of War to start a fight. Whether it was in mid, whether it was a side lane, and really Sneakies have been in defense or kind of cross map to stop a fight that he's not in. C9 is not getting those chances with the way Team Dignitas is playing. And now 15 to four, they look to knock down the Nexus turrets here. Waves coming in on each side, and they're just waiting for the final one here from the bottom lane. Looks like they're gonna help it get in just a little bit faster with that minion, or Baron buff on the minions. And the first Nexus turret is gonna go down. Lemon Nation now follows the next Nexus turret quickly going down. Aspect of the Dragon isn't even necessary. Dignitas not allowed to get a turret yesterday. Do the same thing to Cloud9 at 33-20 in the game. Dignitas takes down Cloud9. Woo, yeah, in stylish fashion too. Very, very stylish fashion. Team Dig showing some strength here on day two. Day one didn't shake them up too much at all. They knew there were some mistakes, and they did not let them affect their game to play. Rico did not look happy yesterday on the screen. We saw him. A bigger smile today. Much bigger smile. <laughs> Turn that frown upside down, he says. Yeah, definitely. Congratulations to Team Dignitas. Well executed game plan, and they did not falter either towards the mid game, towards the late game. They took their really, really big early game lead, and drove it home. Four minutes. <laughs> Oh, the hugs. <laughs> Don't get yourself in trouble now. You're breaking the white line. All right, he's back across the line. We're okay. So a great game by Dig. A lot of the fans hope to see this happen over and over again for them. And Cloud9 to kind of reassess what's going on with the team. They did falter a little bit at the beginning of the spring split, so no huge worries for the team there. But some things to iron out, as expected, with Incarnation coming into the mid lane. Yeah, and again, they've gone back to the Kogma pick two times in a row. Kogma right. is the champion um, that has a weaker laning phase and is all about the late game. True. Uh, but they were not able to get there. They really struggled to get there the first time around, and this time, not even close. I'm wondering, that Ash pick would go through and all the way to Sneaky. But it looks like that's what they wanted. A Zingy was right to the top lane. They got that duo to work out very well. Get a kill lane, Callista Nautilus. Right. Early jungle pressure. Yep. And like Mar uh, we saw Dexter tweeting in the middle of the game there, the combination of the Fates call over and over again. Once in the top lane used where we saw Core JJ face check a brush. We're like, this could be bad. His team was already on the way up. He had the Bloodthirster shield. He knew what the deal was. And they were working things way before Cloud9 could even see them happening. They had the vision. Like you said, that's big for the, the Zack game. And Zingy came up big finally on his Zack. He's been picking it over and over again. Sometimes works. Made it look good this made time. It, made it look really good this time. So strong play from Team Dignitas here to come out on day two, especially against Cloud9 after a great win over TSM that really made them feel good. I'm sure Medios is kind of kicking himself a little bit. He'll be able to look at this game and say, this is where I should have made this call and this. because. This is where you can fix stuff, right? If you're winning all the time, usually you don't know why. It's just like, yeah, shit's working out. We're 25 and three this season because we picked the good champs. That's yeah, lose, C9 would usually lose some say. games at the beginning of the season so you get experience shot calling from behind. There you go. That's how it happens. So we've got Team Dignitas' support standing by with chat on.